Okay, so how do you go from this to this? So how do you go from a fertilized egg and then become a full human? So how do you start off one cell and then end up as a fully formed adult? Well, so and not only that, but how do we go also do this? Ooh, look at this kind of like gnarly wound. But what happened to that wound after? Notice that it healed up. So the thing is that, how do we also replace lost cells? Are these two separate questions? Well, there are two separate questions, but they have a common th answer. So what, how do you, are you able to do that? Cell division. So this is how you're able to make more cells in your body and also replace lost cells. And this is how you do it. So what we have here is mitosis and meiosis. But mitosis is how you're able to generate multiple cells having the same DNA as the original cell. So mitosis and meiosis, and these are terms I definitely want you to know. So parent cell, a cell about to make new two new cells. And when you have a parent cell, it makes two daughter cells. And notice that these daughter cells compared to the original parent cells, they have the same genetic information. And human cells do not have only six chromosomes. They're just showing it for um, the sake of ease of presentation and keeping things from being very chaotic with 46 of these in one image. But this is a key take home point. So with the parent cell here, and when it undergoes mitosis, you have two daughter cells that are identical. So they have the same amount of chromosomes. And if everything was normal, then they have the same DNA sequence. So if nothing went wrong with mitosis and there's no mutations, you will have the same DNA in all daughter cells. Now what over here we have over here with meiosis, so meiosis, yeah, meiosis, meiosis, tomato, tomato. But what we have here with parent cell is dividing, but now you have four daughter cells. And notice that in this original parent cells, each of these daughter cells have half the chromosomes as that original parent. So that's one key difference between meiosis and mitosis is that you have in mitosis, you should generate the same pretty much virtually identical in the nucleus cell every single time you do mitosis. But in meiosis, what you have is a halving of that chromosome. So what we have here is spermatogenesis. And then so for the male reproductive system, you from one spermatocyte, you generate a spermatogonium. You generate four sperm with this half amount of chromosomes as the original spermatogonium. And in females, you have the same thing happening, but instead of like, so here's a key difference. So what we have with mitosis, meiosis, mitosis, you're resulting in two identical. So they have the same amount of chromosomes, same genetic sequence, but in meiosis, you have four sex cells and they have half the amount of chromosomes as a parent. And why is that? Well, when you're fertilizing a new egg, what do you do? You actually take those two halves, one from the male, one from the female, one sperm and ovum, and then you combine those halves to form a new full set. How do the cells divide? Well, they do mitosis, but mitosis is only one part of how a cell's life cycle. So what happens is that there's multiple phases. Now the cell cycle, so the first phase is cell growth or the G1 phase. Then you have your synthesis phase. And what happens during the synthesis? So G1, what do I want you to know at this point? G1 is where your cells are getting ready to divide. So they're kind of building up nutrients, they're making more organelles, they're getting, making sure that all the resources are there for them to actually divide. And then they enter S phase. So S phase refers to synthesis. And what are they synthesizing? Well, the thing is that every time you're in a cell, the, remember, if you're talking about mitosis, you want to go from one cell and generate two cells with the same DNA as the original parent cell. So what you actually have need to do is actually double the DNA so that you can produce double the cells, right? So how does it do that? Well, it actually takes the original DNA in your nucleus or in, your, in the nucleus of a cell that's about to divide, and then it unravels it. And then it makes it into single strands. And from each single strand, it uses base pairing to generate two new strands. I'm showing with this yellow backbone over here. But what do you notice about this? Well, it started out as this, but now with those new strands through synthesis, look at these two strands. They have the exact same sequence. 
So this is why base pairing is very important. It preserves information, not only in going from transcription, but also in generating a new identical DNA molecule from one original molecule. So again, base pairing is very important in preserving it. And this is why if there's problems with base pairing, that can alter the information in the DNA molecule or even RNA. So why is S phase necessary? Well, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So if you've ever done those genetic tests like 23andMe, that's what the 23 is referring to. And there are 46 total, why? Because you actually inherit 23 from your father, biological father, and 23 from your biological mother. So this is why you have 46 in each human somatic cell. And if your DNA didn't duplicate, what would happen? Well, pretend like this is your, or like say you have information from your, your friend is giving you their notes, lecture notes. What if instead of photocopying it, they took this and then halved it and gave you half? And what if you get, they get, and then you, your other friend wants some of your notes and then instead of having it and photocopying it, you did another half. And you keep on doing half and half and half. What do we have? We have a reduction in the actual amount we're getting, right? So this is why with DNA, you need to duplicate it because if you didn't synthesize new DNA every time, this is what would happen to your genome. Every time you divide into half, you would split those 3 billion and reduce it by half every single time. So it would dwindle down to nothing. If you know calculus, what happens if you take that? take a fraction and do it to, an, or actually I think that this is a math class, don't worry about that. All right, so then synthesis, the main goal of synthesis phase is to double your DNA so that you're able to distribute, have an equal amount of DNA that's equal, identical to the original parent cell when you actually divide. Then there's a G2 phase. Do I want you to know the difference between G1 and G2 in specifics? Not at this stage, just know it's the growth stage that happens after S phase. G1 is before F S phase, G2 is after S phase. And this is between that and mitosis. So mitosis, now this is what happens after G2. And say these are the stages of mitosis. This picture is pretty much all I want you to know for this class. I, again, I think maybe intro to biology or cell molecular biology might want you to know more about this. So this cleavage furrow and where are these things like prophase is kind of like you're preparing, metaphase is when it meets in the middle, anaphase, well, this is where you, it breaks apart, telophase is where it starts to pull this like at opposite ends and the cytokinesis is when you finally cleave something but actually cytokinesis starts kind of around this part right here so what what do i want you to know well especially with those centrioles this is why the centrioles they don't they're not actual like membrane bound organelles they don't have membranes but they're very important kind of pulling helping to align and pull these chromosomes and distribute them so you have an even amount of chromosomes between each cells So that's what we have. So I have to think of that this way. I like to think that centrioles are kind of like little, like little fishing poles. They kind of throw that their lines to the chromosomes, and they're able to kind of pull them and reel them into opposite sides of, of these the uh, original cell to make to each daughter cell. Your cat likes walking on keyboard during class. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I know. It's like, I know, <laughs> I I know that like that happened with Mr. Peanut during a meeting too. Yeah, all I know all about pets interfering with <laughs> with class, but I mean, I can't get mad at him. He, and plus he was like, a, I know he was actually behaving last time, but okay. So this is for your reference, but in terms of what I actually want you to know, this part up here, but this part down here is if FYI, if you're taking other classes as well. So these are stages of mitosis. You should definitely know, like this is cl the classic, um, I mean, so many qualifying exams at the basic level use this. So these are the stages. One of my favorite anatomy or one of my favorite mnemonics for this is I'll pass my anatomy test. So I love mnemonics that just don't tell you like the first letter. They actually have an order to it, multiple layers of information. So these are the layer, the stages of mitosis in order. Now, common, common, common mistake is that 
Yes, mitosis is very complex, but a common misconception is that mitosis is a majority of a cell cycle. But if you actually look at this image over here, it's like eight or more hours in G1, six to eight hours in S phase, two to five hours. Mitosis, even though it looks like 25% of the cell cycle, it's actually the shortest part of the cell cycle. So it's the fastest part, a lot happens, it's very important, but it's not the longest phase despite being very complex and important to your body. Okay, so this is the cell cycle. So G1, then S, where you double and duplicate your DNA, and then G2, and then you have the mitosis, and then the, now you have two new daughter cells. There's also G0 or G0 or G0 phase, which is quiescence, or if, especially if you're talking about like cancer cells and cell division is senescence. Eh, senescence is actually a little more complex than that, but yeah, this is what G0. So it's kind of like if a cell is in the regular cell cycle, it's dividing constantly, but your cells can kind of be idle and be put in neutral. So they're still alive, but they're not dividing. So when they're alive but not dividing, this is what we call the G0 phase. So they could divide, but they're choosing not to. So this is the quiescence, it's kind of like idling and staying in place. So still metabolically active, but not actively dividing. But if it, the thing is that cells can exit G0 phase and end up in the cell cycle again, but that means they're actually going to divide. 